Now, before you sit down, our mom is in the house and we love her so much. Amen. We thank God for our mom. Amen. She's a great mom. And I know you love her. And I also love her. Amen. Amen. So I want us to sit down, please. Now, the preacher in the morning messed me up. So if you find I'm trying to find my way, just know that the, it's because of uh, the preacher in the morning. Amen. And we thank God because of her. Wonderful. Threshing the mountains. Threshing the mountains. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, kind of uh, topic because we all face mountains. And if you're not facing one, maybe in the next few weeks you will be facing a mountain or something you need to conquer. Or maybe your eyes haven't been opened to see that there are mountains around you. But we all face mountains, we all face issues, things that we need divine intervention, things that we need God to step in in our lives. Now, in the threshing of the mountains, there is the God side and the we side, the God side and the we side, or the our side. So we need to understand what is the God side in this issue and what is my side in this issue so that you don't do what God needs to do, but you do what you are supposed to do and you let God do what he is supposed to do. Now, it is important also to understand that the we side is dependent on the God side. If God is not doing it, then we cannot amount to anything. If God is not going, then we can't go anywhere. If God is not fighting, then we can never win the battle. If God is not, then we are not. So our we side is dependent on the God side. And for us to win, for us to excel and prosper, it is important to understand the God side. It's very important, brethren, for us to understand the God side. Uh, God has the best plan for us. God has the best interest of heart in uh, the, the best interest of you in His plan for this year, 2024. So let us get to know what He desires. Let us team up with Him, and no mountain shall be able to stand against us. So today I wish to discuss one thing in the ways to thresh the mountains, which is practicing the presence of God. And I will still discuss just only one thing in the practicing uh, uh, the presence of God, which is praise, which is praise. Now, let me launch a disclaimer here that nothing is as effective in moving or threshing the mountains before us as the tool practicing the presence of God. Nothing is as effective in moving or threshing the mountains before us as the tool practicing the presence of God. Now, practicing God's presence, if the media can help us so that we get a few things so that we see, Practicing the presence of God entails or encompasses several aspects. And those aspects include consecration, very important. The scripture calls us to a life of consecration. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the masses of God, that you may present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. That is your sincere spiritual act of worship. Consecration is very important. In 2 Timothy uh, 2, verses uh, 9, 19 to 20 also, it speaks to us that the foundation, the solid foundation of God's house is sure that God knows them who are his. Then verses 20 begins to say, uh, actually, verses 19, still down there, it says, And anyone who consecrates himself or who sanctifies 
himself. Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord must sanctify or must put themselves apart for God. Then verses 20 begins to narrate to us that in a great house like this, in a great house there are so many vessels. And then it finishes, it says, anyone that purchases himself shall be a vessel meet for the master's use unto every good work. So consecration is a very important thing. Then the other thing is obedience to God. Obedience to God is very important, brethren. And obedience, actually, when we look at it, it speaks of us being under authority. If you are under authority, you will be an obedient person. But if you are a headlong person, a person who doesn't want to be under authority, then you will be a disobedient person. And the scripture says in Isaiah 119 that if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So the willingness to obey is very important. Obedient to God's word. John 14, 15, the Bible says, if we love him or if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So our obedience is very important, brethren. That speaks concerning practicing the presence of God. Then also prayer is also an aspect of practicing the presence of God. Then praise and worship. And I have just zeroed in to look at praise there. Then the word and studying and meditating of scriptures is very important. It's also part of the practice of the presence of God. Then fellowship with the brethren. You know, the scripture is very vivid, is very open to us. It says, if any two of you shall meet together in my name, then I will be in their midst. Uh, in other words, God's presence is in our midst when we have the fellowship of the brethren. That's why we are saying fellowship is one of the marks of us practicing the presence of God. Hallelujah. Now, practicing God's presence means discerning and developing habits of discerning an awareness of God's presence. Please, the media people, I want us to move together because everyone is seeing me, so there is no need for my image even to be on the screen, but for them to see what we have. Amen? Yeah, practicing God's presence means discerning. In other words, when we come together, you have your spiritual senses need to be aware that God is present. God is in this place. Discern, you discern that God is here. And where God is, everything is possible. Anything is possible. It's very important. Then you develop habits of discerning. You develop habits of discerning. So you will know that God is present or God is not present. Because you have excess session, God is present. In this meeting, God is present. Praise the Lord. Now, mountains, as we have been taught, speaks of things or projects we want to do. Things or projects we want to do. It speaks of issues or things opposing our progress or lifting. It speaks of obstacles. It might be sicknesses, problems the enemy casts against us. It speaks of ladders or levels of influence, influence we wish to ascend to in career, in business, in profession, in ministry, and many other things. Mountains. And threshing is actually overcoming these obstacles and achieving what you wanted. It's achieving what you wanted. Like if I want to be a doctor, there are things I have to overcome so that I be a doctor. Praise the Lord. I thank God I didn't specify a medical or which doctor. So I can't be any doctor. But I have to overcome some things. Praise the Lord. It's very important. Now, today, I will just focus on the God side and a few things on praise. Isaiah 41. 
Isaiah 41. And I want us to look at uh, from verses 1 so that we get a few things that God is speaking to us. It's good for us to understand what God says to us. Isaiah 41, verses 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Can we read verses 41? Uh, verses 1. Keep silence before me, O coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. Father God, we ask you, give us understanding, revelation, even Lord, and inside of your word as we share today. We thank you because you're present in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the scripture begins to tell us what God is saying. And God is commanding the coastlands. He is commanding the coastlands. Uh, of Palestine, Egypt, Asia Minor to be silent and come near for judgment. And we stand here by divine authority and we command every power and spirits that raises accusations against our lives, against our families, against our businesses, against our careers to be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. That this year, any powers orchestrated to rise up and speak against you. The scripture gives us authority that any tongue that rises against you in judgment, it shall be condemned. So we condemn every tongue in the land of the living and in the land of the dead in the name of Jesus. And we announce to them that God's judgment is against them. Hallelujah. God's judgment has come. And their destruction has come. And we overthrow them in the name of Jesus. So God is commanding the coastland to keep silent. Why? Because he wants his people to renew their strength. To renew their strength. Some voices that have been speaking to us, they need to be silenced. Some things that are speaking, it might be in our bodies, it might be in our spirits when we sleep or when we are walking. Today, we pronounce they need to be silenced forever in the name of Jesus. Now, the scripture continues in verses 8, Isaiah 41, verses 8. This is the God side. God is speaking to us. He says, but you, Israel, you are my servant. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, you are God's servant. Now, don't look down upon yourself. Don't let anyone look down upon you. You are God's servant. Praise the Lord. As long as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been washed with his precious blood, you are God's servant. You don't need this microphone for you to be a servant of God. Wherever you are, you are God's servant. Can you touch yourself and say, I am God's servant. Now, as God's servant this year, you need to manifest. Because when we are threshing mountains, you need to stop, to step on the top of the mountain and sing the glorious joy of God inside you, the glorious praise of Jehovah God, because you are on the top of your mountains. Hallelujah. So say to your neighbor, you are God's servant. Now, the second thing God says in this scripture, he says, Jacob, whom I have chosen. So you need to understand this, that God has chosen you. Praise the Lord. God has chosen you. You know, you may have lived a few years and you're thinking, I'm not seeing any man come before me. No one is proposing. The ones that are proposing are married people. I want to tell you, you are God's chosen. God has chosen you. At your place of work, many things may be going on. And you are thinking, no one values me. I want you to understand, according to this scripture, you are God's chosen. God has chosen you. 
Okay. You may, you may not understand many things, but I want you to understand this, that God has chosen you. It's very important. Why it diffuses inferiority complex, it diffuses accusations of the enemy, it diffuses many things that people speak or do against you. Because you understand that after all, I am God chosen. And the scripture says in 2 Peter 2 verses 9. It says we are a royal priesthood. God has chosen us to be a royal priesthood. To be a peculiar nation. A holy... Uh, 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 uh. Did I say 2 Peter or 1 Peter? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. God has chosen us to be a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A special people for himself. Praise the Lord. We are God chosen. Now God continues to say, still in verses 8, that the descendants of Abraham, my friend. Are you seeing what the scripture is portraying? Yeah. The descendants of Abraham, my friend. In other words, you are a covenant son or daughter of Abraham by faith. And when you come to look at it, you see the blessings of Abraham now flow to you. It flows to us. Because of what we are covenant sons and daughters. We are just not anything. No, 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 no. We are covenant people. Praise the Lord. Now, the scripture continues in verses 9. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its father's regions and say to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Praise the Lord. Then the scripture continues to say, fear not, verse 10, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, a few things for us to understand here. That God has taken you from the ends of the earth. From wherever you are. Praise the Lord. God has taken you. He has brought you into the common wealth of his blessings. Now... He says to you and to me that fear not. Why shouldn't we fear? Because he is with us. God is with you. Praise the Lord. God is with you. Mungu apo na wewe. Ako na wewe. Hajakuacha. Mungu ako na wewe. God is with you. Wherever you go, he is with you. When you sleep, he is with you. You may ask yourself questions, a few questions sometimes, and say, God, where are you? I'm going through this. But understand this, that he who promised, he will never leave you, neither forsake you. He is ever with you. Praise the Lord. So God is with you. Then he says, fear not. He is your God. Amen. He gives us a few things there. He says, he is your God. He will strengthen you. He will help you. And he will uphold you with his mighty righteous hand. That is God's sight on this part of threshing the mountains. Praise the Lord. Now, verses 11, I want us to get something even as we go on. He says, behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. So there is a judgment that God is pronouncing to all those who are incensed against you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Forces that sit, they are just conniving on how to bring you down, how to fight you, how to fight your children, how to fight your family, how to make you never prosper. God is saying something to us here. He's saying, behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed. 
And I pray that this year may the Lord cover shame and reproach all those who are incensed against you. They that do not need your, do not want your business to prosper, may they be covered with shame. They that doesn't want your family to excel, may they be covered with shame. Praise the Lord. Now the scripture continues to say, they shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. Verse 12, you shall seek them and not find them. Those who are contented with you. So they shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. Those who strive against you this year shall perish and be no more. Those who contented or warred with you shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. This is God's side. And I love God's side. Because it gives me the strength now to rise up, to move on. Praise the Lord. Now, when we come to verses 13, God again begins to say, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. God's side. He's saying, I'm holding your hand. Fear not. Why? Because I will help you. Tell your neighbor, I have help. I have a helper. And that is my God. Then, verses 14, fear not, you, O warm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I will make you into a new threshing instrument. So the Lord your God will hold your right hand saying, fear not. He's going to help you. Then he says, I'm going to make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. And I want you to understand this, that God doesn't make mistakes. He knows what you can become. And he's fixing you. Tell your neighbor, God is fixing me. Yeah, your neighbor may be seeing some weaknesses in you. You don't pray when we are praying. You don't raise your hands when we are raising. You don't kneel down even if a thunder comes. <laughs> but God is fixing you. Amen. He's working on you. Amen. So you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. You shall make the hills like chaff. And after that, after that, let's look at that scripture, verse 16. After that, what happens? After that, after overcoming your mountains, the scripture says, you shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Stepping on the mountain top. And lifting the banner of Jesus and saying, he has done it again. He has done it again. Great is the Holy One of Israel. Psalms 121 verses 1 to 8. Psalms 121 verses 1 to 8. Let's look at what this scripture says. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Now, some fashion say to the mountains, from whence comes my help? Where does my help come? I'm facing mountains. I'm looking at the mountains. Where is my help? Then verses 2 begins to give us what God is saying to us or what the scripture says to us, pointing us. Come on, let's read together what the scripture says. My help, aha, uh -huh. he is not just a God like Jehovah Wanyonyi of some people I know. He is not like Ondeto of some people that I used to know. He is not like somebody else anywhere, but this our God, he is the maker of heaven and an earth. In other words, he controls what is in heaven and he controls what is on earth. 
That's why he tells us that when we pray, we pray, let that which is done in heaven be done here on earth because he is in charge of everything. Praise the Lord. So my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Verses 3 says, come on, we are reading together. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Just look at our God, God's side. He is our help and he says, I'm not letting your foot to be moved. Even if the raging sea comes, I'm not letting your foot to slip away. You are not going to fall. You are not going to go back. You're not going to run away. And he says, he who watches over you will not slumber. He will not sleep. Praise the Lord. Our God is watching over you. This whole year, 24-7. Every month, every day of every month, the Lord God is watching over you. Hallelujah. He won't let you be caught by the enemy. Praise the Lord. No wonder the psalmist bursts out in Psalms 24 and says, If it were not the Lord. Psalms 124. If it were not the Lord who was on our side. Yeah, because God was watching over him. He knew that. Then verses 3, the scripture continues. It says, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. First of all, behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Come on, somebody say, the Lord is my keeper. This year may the Lord keep you. When you go out, when you come in, may the Lord keep you. When you sit down, when you rise up, may the Lord keep you. In every area of your life, may the sovereign Lord keep you. Then verse 6, the scripture says, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. In other words, every forces of the day, they will not strike you. Every forces of the night, they will not strike you. You, are, you have a shed, you have a keeper, and that keeper is Jehovah God. Praise the Lord. Very important. Verse 7, it says, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. This year, tell your neighbor, I am preserved. From all, from all evil. No stray bullet, no accident, no misfortune shall ever come near me, nor my family. I am preserved from all evil. Now, it's not just some evil, but from all evil. Praise the Lord. Let's look at another scripture. Psalms 114, verses 1 to 8. I have just a few scriptures. Actually, this is almost the second last scripture. So that the praise and worship team comes and we finish off. Psalms 114. So that we understand what the scripture is saying. Why I am saying, practicing the presence of God. Praise. The area of praise. Psalms 114, please give us that scripture. Come on, we are reading together. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from people of a strange language, verse 2. Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his, verses 3. The sea saw it. Aha. Jordan turned. Verses 4. Aha. Verses 5. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? Verses 6. O mountains, that you skipped like rams? O little hills, like lambs? Verse 7. Tremble, O earth. 
at the presence of the God of Jacob. Verse 8, who turned the rock into a pool of water. Now, here is a scenario the psalmist is portraying so that we may understand that when Israel came out of Egypt and they were on the way to the land of promise, then a few things he gives us happened. He says, the sea, according to that scripture, he says, the sea fled. It saw it and it fled. Then he talks of Jordan turning back. Then he says, the mountain skipped like rams. They were running away. Hills, they ran away like little lambs. When they saw the people of God. But why? The question is, why were they running away? Why were they flying and running maybe for their lives if they had life? Why were they doing so? Then it answers us. Praise the Lord. It answers us in verse 7. That trample all at, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Now, before even you go to verse 7, when you look at verse 2, it gives us why they were running away. It says, Judah became his sanctuary. Judah, the name Judah means praise. It speaks of praise. Praise. So in other words, you can say, praise became his sanctuary. And Israel, or the prince, became his dominion. Where he was exercising authority. So I want you to understand this. That when these people made God his sanctuary, when they made a sanctuary for God, then the sea began to flee. Then the mountains began to skip like rams. Then the hills began to run away as lambs. Because they had made the Holy One of Israel a sanctuary. They were exercising the presence of God. Now, time doesn't allow us to look in Exodus 15 so that you may understand what this scripture is speaking about. Because in Exodus 15, you will understand that when they had come and the enemies had been crushed in the, in the Red Sea, Moses burst out with a song. Miriam took lead of all the women of Israel and they began to sing praises unto Jehovah God. Declaring that there is no one like him. There is no rock like him. And he had sunk their enemies in the waters. Making a sanctuary for God. Praise. In Psalms 22 verses 3. Psalms 22 verses 3. The Bible says. But you are holy. Enthroned in the praises of of Israel. You are holy and throned in the praises of Israel. So God sits on the praises of his people. Oh, are we in the church? Yeah, I know you come to church, you have been taught to be always quiet. Even in the house, you are ever quiet when we want to pray. You are ever quiet when the worship leader says, come on, raise your voice and just tell the Lord, I love you. You are so quiet. You don't want to offend God or your neighbor. But I want you to understand this, that God dwells on the praises of his people. And when God's presence comes, the mountains begin to skip. The hills begin to run away like lambs. The Red Sea or the sea begins to Run to flee. Praise the Lord. When the presence comes, let me point out to us, there are mountains, even if you cast from morning to evening, they will never go. They are just waiting for your praise. When you begin to praise the Lord, because he is good and his mercy endures forever, then those mountains begin to melt away. 
they begin to skip away from your life. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 43 verses 21, the scripture says, These people have I formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. Come on, tell, the Lord, tell somebody that the Lord has made me. He has formed me. And he is forming me. As an instrument of praise. I gonna trumpet his praise. So God wants us to trumpet, to demonstrate his praise. Hallelujah. We demonstrate his praise. That's what he wants for you and for me. Praise the Lord, church. Now, let me rush so that I call the worship team to come. Psalm 68. We read this scripture, then we call them to come. So that in a few minutes, we demonstrate what we are learning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 68, verses 24. Verse 24. Now, you can read through 30. But I want us to get a demonstration of the procession of God in his sanctuary. So that you may understand what God desires. Come on, we, we are reading together. Come on, let's go. They have seen your procession, O oh God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. Verse 25. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, let's stop there a little bit so that you understand. The procession of God going to his sanctuary as the psalmist is giving us that picture, that video, so that you get it. He says, they have seen your procession, and we want our enemies to see that procession this year. So they have seen your procession, O oh God. Then he begins to say, the singers went before. This year, it's a year we are praying for our singers. The ones that lead us in praise and worship in this place as never before. Because in the procession of God, they have to go before. Amen. Amen. And when they were singing here, I wanted to tell them, this year we have to record our music. Praise the Lord. Where is Pastor Joe? We have to record our music. I will lead us to record the music. Oh, you don't know I'm a singer. I'm a singer. Praise the Lord. We have to record. Maybe not even one. Yeah. Or oh, we do one, then next year, early year, we do another one. So that uh, people get accustomed to what we are doing. Amen. And we build a culture. Praise the Lord. So the singers went before. Then it says, the players on instruments followed. Praise the Lord. They followed. Now, if you are here and you play instrument, please don't sit down. This is your year for you to bring the procession of God in the sanctuary. We want you here. By fire. Amen. They have said it. So we want you here. Now, when you read down there, it says concerning the leaders followed. It talks of the maidens, then it comes the leaders also followed. So our prayer is that our leaders will lead also in this procession. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let me call the worship team. Because if we go like that, then we will want some other minutes. So that we look at a few things. A few things. Just as you are rising up, some Hebrew words for praise. I want you to rise up and we are looking at a few words. Where are the instruments on the instruments? <laughs> Instrumentalists on the instruments. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Oh, we had said we are rising up. Now the first word is Toda. Please give us, give us the slide. 
order so that God's people may see what it is. We read together that slide. Seven Hebrew words for praise. Number one is toda. Can we say it? Yeah, we can see it. Now, toda speaks of sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. I came to the service. I don't feel like praising God. I don't feel like lifting hands. I just want to sit down and keep quiet. But Toda speaks of, I have to do it anyway. I don't feel it. I don't feel like doing it. But I rise up to do it. I can lift my hands whether I don't feel it or I'm feeling it. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why we always sing. We say, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of praise. We offer. We offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of praise. So we come in the house with a sacrifice of praise. I don't feel it. I am maybe down, so down. But I say, Lord, I will lift you anyway. I will lift you anyway. I will dance to you anyway. I will say of your goodness anyway. Praise the Lord. Then the second word is halal. Uh, not halal, but yada. Let's look at it, yada. Now, yada speaks of hands raised. Surrender. Cry out. Throw. Bless. And receive. So when we are, when the worship leader, when they are telling us, come on, raise your hands. They are not just telling us because they love us, suffer raising hands up. No, no, no. <laughs> they are simply telling us to yada. Amen? Yeah, they are telling us to yada, to raise our hands unto God. Come on, somebody, just raise your hands up. There are so many scriptures, so many scriptures that talk concerning us raising hands. Raise it up unto God. Just tell him, Lord, we bless you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I exalt you. Come on, raise your hand and lift him up. In the name of Jesus. Psalms 134 verse 2 says, Lift your hands in holiness and bless the Lord. Psalm 63 verse 4 says, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands in the sanctuary. Oh, come on, somebody raise your holy hands unto him. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the honor, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Nainu ami kono yangu likisema we bwana kanu okoa kutoka mautini Sema we bwana inakiri ili nakiri uwezo wako oh wewe watosha tunaindua tunaindua mikono yetu oh tukisema we bwana katuokoa Toka mautini Tunasema Tunasema e buwana oh, Tunakiri uwezo wako oh, 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 Wewe watosha 
yes, Lord, we bless you, we bless you. The third word is Barak. Barak. Now, Barak speaks of quiet voice to kneel, to bow. It speaks of humility and submission. Now, sometimes, you know, I come from almost near Samboda here. And the ladies of the country which we border, they used to frequent our district by then. And they used always, when they are greeting somebody, they have to... No, they kneel, they go down, they bend down. They kneel down. Amen? Amen. Submission. That is what Barak is speaking about. Whereby we are bowing down. We are kneeling down before God. Hallelujah. We are kneeling before him because he is a great God. We cannot equate ourselves with God. He is mighty. Let me tell you this. There are mountains, unless you kneel, they will just be staring at you. The mountain of pride. Ah, keep buri. Wait, 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 wait. But, but this year, we are conquering it. Amen. We are conquering it. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Oh, we bow down. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, great God. Oh, hallelujah. 
Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Number four, halal. Now, halal speaks of soul rejoice. It speaks of dance. It speaks of shine forth. It speaks of clamorously exclaiming. Hallelujah. Halal. Now, from the word halal comes the word hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means you put off that uh, gentility. Ile ungwana. You lay it off so that you clamorously. It's like you are extravagant in praising God now. You are not reserving anything, but you are extravagant. The way we say David danced before God and praised God clamorously, that is the way we do it. That's how we do it. Amen. Praise the Lord somebody. Yeah, that's how we do it. The scripture says in Psalms 149, verses 3, it says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Praise the Lord. I have come to give you a I have come to say thank you Lord yeah, to I give you a clap say I have come to give you to you yeah, say I have come Lord I have come to say thank you Lord yeah, say I have come to lift up my hands I have come yeah, to lift up my hands say I have come say A club. I have come to give you a club. Yeah, to say that. time but let's just finish off something here because God is present in the house amen? amen then number five is Zamar Zamar now Zamar speaks of play for him a song to praise with an instrument now you have been given God is so gracious that he has given each one of us an instrument an instrument amen so with your instrument, your hands, if you can put your phone down, you are, you, are, you are writing down so that we give him some praise. We just give him some praise with a clap. Hallelujah.
praise the Lord now. I will praise him every Somebody praise him. Yeah, I will praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord now. Yeah, I will praise him every day. Holy. I will praise the Lord. Somebody lift the Lord now. I will lift him every day. Lift him higher. I will lift the Lord. Somebody lift the Lord now. I will lift him every day. Lift him higher. I will lift the Lord. Somebody blow your trumpet. Blow your trumpet. Somebody blow your trumpet. Say, say, Jehovah, 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 Hallelujah, give him a praise. Now, the last two, the last two. Number six is Tehila. Tehila. Now, Tehila speaks to sing along. It speaks of so spontaneous combination of any of what we have talked about. It's like it just comes. Amen? It just comes. Praise the Lord. All of them. Psalm 47 verses 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, O ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph, plus other scriptures like so. Now, the last one is Shabbat. Shabbat. Now, to Shabbat is to shout for joy. Do, you ha do, do I have a people that are full of God's joy in the house? Hallelujah. So it speaks of shout with joy. It speaks of shouting loudly, triumphantly, or to triumphant, as if victory was in balance and we win. I, I, I don't know. I, I know I have a people here who are good people who watch games. And when their, game, when, when their team wins, Ah, uh, that house, people will eat nyamachoma. That house, people will eat fish or something. Yeah. <laughs> because they will shout. Amen? So that is what is speaking to us. Amen? So uh, I wonder, just in a minute, as we have wrapped it off, and these things, please do them. Practicing. Practicing. Practice them. Amen. Practicing them in your house, even at your workplace, when you are walking. Yeah, you just lift your hands. No one will condemn you. Lord, I lift you. Yeah. Yeah, you may not kneel on the road, but in your house you can kneel. In your office you can kneel. Amen. Gai wa kwa gai wa kwa e Gai wa kwa we wa mae gamia Gai wa kwa gai wa kwa e Gai wa kwa we wa mae O ni mune ne ni mune ne O e mune ne we wa mae gamia We mune ne we mune ne We mune ne we wa mae Ekeoti <laughs> Oh, 
one more time, one more time, one more time. Tambua we we ni buema. Kwa matendo ya koni na juwa kwamba we ni buema. Na kwa neno la koni na juwa we we ni buema kwa. Bwana ni metambua we wa ni penda we. Bwana ni metambua we we ni muema. One two three, Sangilia yes. Come on, lift up your voice, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Zeka raba baba zera rianda rabos. Zeka zeka zeberi rianda rabos. Sera la bala, la 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 la. 